Hi everybody, Dacov here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today I'm going to present to you top five perfumes for the month of August 2020. But for my patrons, by the way, thank you patrons, for, patrons, thank you Patreon and patrons for helping support the channel. Uh, on Patreon, this video will be longer. There will be also an extra fragrance added and there will be a behind the top five perfumes of the month of August. Um, bit of the video so it's gonna be like a double feature double length video on patreon so stay tuned for patrons for that on patreon and for youtube let's get started now last month i ended uh the for those of you who don't know july uh top five perfumes for the month of july ended with obsession for women in the depth of night the pure perfume a rare rare thing and look what i got here this <laughs> This is, of course, my obsession for obsession runs deep. This little baby will be featured in an upcoming review of obsession. It is a Factis bottle from the 80s, still with its original juice. Of course, this is not real perfume in there. It's just the color of the juice. It's just so beyond beautiful, mesmerizing and hypnotizing and um, the love of my life. So obsession for women, but it's unisex. It's just, I'm saying for women because 1985 it came out. I'm saying for women because the first perfume in August is Obsession for Men. So, it's kind of symbolic to end last month with this obsession and to begin the new month in the early morn when you wake up to Obsession for Men. Now, let me just put this beauty down because it's glass and it's fragile. Okay. Coty is the distributor of Obsession for Men. In Europe, IFRA is messing with all fragrances, as we know. Interesting thing, I've always like envisioned if I were to make a perfume, I would like to sell it worldwide, but in Europe, I would have to sell it under the restrictions of the IFRA. In America, those restrictions don't apply. In other countries, other restrictions apply. So I would kind of envision producing a perfume and stating very clearly on the package that that, that uh, this particular formula is for America, this is for Europe, you know, have those nuances. And guess what? Koti already did it. Why am I saying this? Because if your obsession for men is made in the US and you look on the ingredients list on the back of the, of the, of the box, you're going to see that oak moss is in it. If you have one of the recent made in France bottles of obsession for men, recent batches, year to two years back, as is this one. Guess what's missing on the ingredients list? Yagest, oak moss. So Koti is actually selling us two different versions of obsession for men. There's the American version with oak moss and the European version without oak moss. Interesting, right? Well, they're both great, except the made in France version, which we have here, is more heavy on the carnation than it would be on the oak moss. So it's a little bit less skanky, but they're both amazing. I like both. So in a way, you're good to go either way, but it's interesting that they're kind of, you know, they could have just gone the route of just saying, well, we're just not gonna do oak moss at all in it. It's gonna be the same product in America as well as in Europe. No, this wasn't the case up until a couple of years ago. I have not yet seen a fresh new, from this year, last year produced batch in the USA. If they still produce them there by now, during this whole situation we're going through in 2020, uh, I'm not sure if the current situation of the of the ingredients listed on the U.S. or if they still produce them in the U.S. if it still has oak moss or not. But up until a year or two ago, that was the case. By the way, I'm wearing uh, my merch. For those of you who have seen the other video already, I presented my merch. Jacob the extract. So of course, perfumes are my obsession. I created this line of. Um, with my team, a design of the hand, my zombie hand, 
and the perfume bottle, which is the extract perfume bottle for Halloween, spraying this special perfume. You could check out, actually I can pin it at the top of this video, the link to my uh, Teespring uh, shop where you can get to see the entire collection of the Halloween, the extract, the Dacob the Extract collection, hoodies, crewnecks, t-shirts, mugs, stickers, um, and I'm wearing it for the occasion. I was so excited actually because I just received the sample. I didn't even get a chance to wash it yet. So if you, if anybody's curious about this particular line here, this is because when the stuff arrives, you got to wash it and then this fades because this is the, the press on the sticker and that machine left kind of a pressure point, which disappears after washing. So just to let you know, being very just mad about it, super excited about it, had no time to wash it yet, so I'm just wearing it because I thought the perfume matches the situation. So obsession for men is light, but the more it lingers on the skin, it goes into that carnation and then a little bit of the sandalwoody type of thing, or oak moss in some cases, or more the vetiver, patchouli-esque type of light, 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 light nuance. It's really beautiful as it dries down. Opening up, it's a little bit harsh, perhaps. Almost cheap in a way, because, I mean, you know, this formula has been watered down. It's not the same as it was in the 80s, but it's still very pleasant. And um, I'm loving it, even today. And because it's so light and delicate, it's a great way to begin the day. It's just a great way to smooth into the day. And as the day smooths in, ha, it gets kind of heavy because around noon, I, I'm still in the 80s. I'm around 87 right now and I am completely, because this is also in the 80s, by the way, came out in the 80s. I'm still in the 80s, you guys. And I am infatuated by powdery, sorry, it's like super hot, I'm sweating. Uh, because it is still summer, and uh, that heat, instead of battling it, I go with it, and I go for a, but I want that powdery tone, that, that powdery touch, that clean powdery touch within a heavy fragrance that people would avoid in summer, but I embrace in summer, and that's Lulu. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, Super Deco Ball Spelled Together, I, you know, drop little hints spread out hints about what I use throughout the month. So my, some of you might have already guessed, Lulu is amazing. Lulu is from Cacharel, and Cacharel is, is an incredible, I mean, Cacharel is now under, since many years under, L'Oréal. So L'Oréal, you know, they're all about the big money. So kind of, they water down stuff, but Lulu is still amazing. I still love it today. It's, again, this is the fresh formulation. It's not as it used to be. I'm going to do a review on Lulu, and I'm going to also compare it to the vintage. But let's just say, without going always into throwing shade at the new formulations, this still, today, beats almost every new release out there, in my opinion. Because this has so much character, even in its watered-down version, it still lasts hours. I just love it to death. Now, what, this is interesting, I'm going to touch base on this in the review, but, mm, so I'm not going to show you how I do these things, but Lulu in particular, the new bottles, this is how they save money, not just watering down the juice, but also watering down the actual packaging and bottles. The box of Lulu does not have a carton inside, it's just, you know, the box and inside this thing is kind of like wobbling inside the box. There's no protection cardboard thingy that usually perfumes have extra inside the perfume box. So they saved money on that. And the glass bottle is no longer uh, colored through and through. It's not a blue glass. It's actually probably a transparent or dark glass and then it's um, sprayed blue. It's not fake, it's original. But it's cheaper that way than actually the original version, first batches of Lulu, the glass was, spray it was not sprayed blue, it was blue glass. Now it's just sprayed blue. So you could actually scratch off the lacquer or the, the spray paint on top. They saved money there too. It is what it is, you guys. I still would say, give us the original formulation, make it cost double the price, make it a limited edition, whatever. People would buy it. But again, even the new, the standard, whatever version we have right now is fine by me, even though it's much lighter, but I love it nevertheless. Oh, I love it so much. And the bottle. Now, um, why this at noon? 
it has a heaviness but a milky creamy powdery touch to it so even though it's a bit cloying in summer it still has that beautiful 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 fresh powdery clean touch to it creamy so it cloys without being sticky it, it cloys in a summery way it's a bloomy beautiful enveloping summery puff of powder it's just that beautiful and for those many 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 people out there who don't like the spray version a bottle by the way this was the this, uh, people say oh no the original design is the little kind of um flat like genie in a bottle thing that yeah that was the original uh design for the splash bottle this was the original design for the spray bottle both of them came out at the same time actually so this is not a modernized version of the lulu it's just the spray bottle they just don't manufacture anymore the splash bottle but this is an 80s design and whoever says this is an ugly design is crazy i know the gustibus non es disputando which means we do not debate taste everybody has different tastes but this to me is a genius bottle and not just beautiful but look if you tilt it like this it is literally a spaceship from star wars or a spaceship from alien i mean it's that 80s futurism we have here the proportions, the symmetry, the, the geometry here. It's a wonderful bottle. I love it to pieces. It's like a toy. In fact, I treat it as, um, I treat it as, a, as a spacecraft. It kind of like flies in, you know, it parks itself, opens up, cargo. Ah. So that's why noon, it's playful. It's kind of during lunch, after lunch. I actually do like to spray before lunch as well. I know some people don't like to smell perfumes while they eat. I love perfumes before I eat and after I eat. So lunchtime playfulness brings back joyous memories. It's almost like a Star Wars movie. It's like a vehicle from Star Wars. Love it. That's why it's noon until we like 4 p.m. 4 p.m. This is interesting. At 4 p.m. It's again Cacharel. Now we're kind of shifting into the 90s. And at 4 p.m. I want to go into a floral garden and I want to retreat into a space where I can cocoon myself in and be myself with myself and just enjoy the abstraction of thought and the abstraction of emotions. And that happens with Eden by Cacharel. This uh, particular spray bottle is from 2015, but I also have a five milliliter a splash bottle from the 90s when it was released same issue here uh, as with lulu the modern day bottles are spray painted in fact this one has already a couple of scratches oh, you can't really see too far the camera but anyway underneath it's like a black glass so the spray paint here is spray paint this one on the other hand is almost like a marbled green it's so beautiful oh my god like I'll show you when I do a review of this perfume, um, but if you do illuminate it from the back and you kind of see the texture of the glass, you see all of the veins and the structure of, because the glass is painted through and through green, each bottle has a different texture and structure to it. It's just like a, almost like literally a leaf that's been taken out of Eden, out of the Garden of Paradise, and uh, it contains this miraculous juice. Now, 2015 edition is already more concentrated and compact than the 2019 and 2020 versions. It has been watered down, but it still delivers a punch. And it's still, again, just like as Lulu, better than almost any new release out there. And it has a very niche quality to it today. So this one being so green and there's the patchouli in there. And there's also tuberose and it's a very strange tuberose. It's a dangerous tuberose. And the, and the patchouli is a vetiverish uh blended patchouli there's the mimosa in there so many flowers the lotus flower and they just kind of it's like you're it's so bizarre this one makes you feel like you are in a, a paradise on earth in eden but it's as if it were a cave so when i wear eden i feel like i'm in the open in nature but it's in my cocoon and the sounds in that nature, thanks to this fragrance, become sounds that echo as if they were happening in a cave. This means that, for example, when I wear Eden, I feel, I don't hear it, I'm not crazy, but I feel as if, let's say, 
in this open space closed cave, I know it's a paradox, but bear with me, water is dripping from, let's say, a tree, but the sound that the water makes, that drop of water makes when it falls onto the ground, into a little puddle of water, that echo is, you know when water drips in a cave? That echo of dripping water, the sound of dripping water echoing in a cave, that echo is Eden. That's exactly what this perfume is. It echoes everything, as if everything was in the open, but at the same time, the sounds in the open sound as if they were echoing in a cave. Oh, it's so beautiful. So that's why like 4 p.m., 5, you know, 6 in summer, you know, the days are already getting shorter because the longest day was on the 21st of June and then slowly days get shorter. So August, by the end of August, days are already considerably shorter than they used to be, you know, in July, obviously. So slowly as Lulu, and uh, so, sorry, Eden, or Eden, as Eden slowly starts, it takes hours for Eden to start fading, actually. It takes Lulu hours to start fading. So, you know, I'm layering all these beautiful, heavy florals, and they're just so majestic in August. And by the way, they're so heavy and majestic because I want to forget everything outside of my cocoon because 2020 is a, a, a type of year, it's just a type of emotion. <laughs> you just want to forget what's outside. You just want to be in your own Eden. So this one lingers on for many hours. And as it starts fading out, I say, God damn it, you know what? I want to be playful now. One last playful gesture before night falls. And this is where I really become nostalgic in a way. And I now we're not in the 90s anymore. Uh, we are now in the 10s. 2014-15, Moschino with Jeremy Scott brings out our teddy bear, which is, uh, this is not a Moschino toy slash toy perfume. You chop the head off the bear, super fun. As I'm like, kind of, every time I take his head off, I think, 2020, bye. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking like, can't wait for 10. As if 2021 is gonna be any better. Whatever, we can hope. But anyway, this perfume is so, so cute. Of course, it's more about the bottle than the fragrance in this case, because I just want to feel happy. I just need to feel happy. I look for happiness. I look for happiness in the 80s and that kind of joie de vivre of the 80s and wonderful movies that came out in the 80s, the tacky movies that came out in the 80s, but also something, this is not from the 80s, but Jeremy Scott is a huge 80s fan, a huge pop art fan. And Muschi Franco Moschino was too, in his own right. Franco Moschino was much more political, but I made many videos on those topics. Anyway, let's stick to this perfume. Um, very hard to get nowadays. Uh, I don't want to say it's been discontinued, but it's really hard to get the, the toy perfume, this teddy bear. It's a 50 ml fragrance. And it's very 2014, 2015. It's, it's a perfume that um, in its own way is groundbreaking because I mean, to me delivers that memory of, you know, Jeremy's first collection for Moschino the McDonald's dedicated collection. And after that, the Barbie collection between those two collections is, is when this little guy was released. I also have that this is not a um, was it a, this is not a Moschino bag or this is not a bag Moschino bag. I actually have the bag as well, just like playing with this Magritte uh, concept and notion of um, you know this is not a pipe. The painting, check it out, Google it if you don't know it. It's playful, it's fun, you know. It's 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 light and the fragrance as well is very light, very artificial. But let me tell you one thing. What is so beautiful about this one is it's one of those rare instances. Euro Italia, by the way, is producing it. So this little guy is made in Italy. Well, the guy is made in China. The juice is made in Italy. Um, it's Euro Italia, you know, they, they still do Moschino fragrances. They do Versace fragrances. They used to do the legendary Dolce Gabbana pour homme and the Dolce Gabbana pour femme, their first fragrance, which is also known as the Red Cap. Um, another fragrance I'm going to review soon. Um... And they've kind of, Euro Italia is great, but they've also changed throughout the years. And I have the feeling for me personally, the teddy bear was kind of their last product that to me had that interesting 
poetry that they used to use in their fragrances in the 90s. This one has it. Now, I know that a lot of the elements used in here, like patented, some like weird new formulas of extraction of, there's a lot of artificial copywritten registered trademarked ingredients in here, which is whatever, doesn't matter. Stuff that wasn't possible in the 90s, but the way it smells, the concept of it is 90s in a way, even though it's made in 2014, but it kind of, it's reminiscent of, to me, the golden days of Euro Italia. It just brings back great, great memories. It, it can be a little bit bitter. It's sweet. It's, no, it's actually, you know what? No, it's not sweet. It's, it's more bitter than sweet. It's a very interesting fragrance. So all of the perfumes, personally, again, I can only speak for myself, that have come out uh, with Moschino. Um, he's so cute. The little, uh, during Jeremy's tenure, this is the best one. Not just as concept of how it looks like, but also as smell. So... It's cute, and I love that first collection Jeremy made, you know, the whole McDonald, the, the Jeremy Scott from Moschino collection, the McDonald's collection. It just brings me joy. And again, in 2020, it feels good to me to go back to 2014. Good, those were good times. So again, I'm. it's my anchor. This is again my anchor. It's my buddy. It's my friend. The teddy bear, he sits here. He, you know, he spends time with me. He... I cuddle him, but he kind of cuddles my, my mood and my my emotions and makes me just feel good. So, so you understand this is another one of those keys that I'm using to kind of get through this crazy year. And then as night finally falls, I'm ready for something a bit more mature, but complicated. Um, because the night is complicated, and it has been complicated for me since this whole uh, terrible year or problem in this year has begun. Because sleeping at night is an issue for me. I mean, I have insomnia and I have problems letting go. You know, I have so much tension. I have headaches almost every day, you guys, because it's not because of perfumes. My mom was like, maybe you're using many perfumes. So I was like, no, it's not that. It's I feel the tension and it, it comes from social media a lot. It comes from Twitter. It comes from reading the news. The, the elections are coming up. It's terrible. And the, the hate in the world on top of this terrible other, you know, disease that, that we're facing. And, and then you have all of these other issues and people hating each other. And um, i got so many words I can't use on YouTube because they're going to, you know, cut us. So, but you can imagine what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of... of well, you just can't say it, but imagine it. People dying without reason. I mean, for a reason, but the, oh, not a good reason. <laughs> no, people should never die under the hands of other people. It's just, it's, oh. I can, I don't know, I can't really, I'm just going to start crying. I literally, every, I sometimes I cry myself to sleep because I think to myself, oh my God, why is this world so full of hate? And, um, and so I stay awake for long periods or, or hours because I try to find a way out and I can't because it's like, it's like you keep hitting a brick wall no matter where you try to find a solution to make stuff better or to think, well, if we did this like that or like this, maybe things, maybe people would wake up, maybe they would become more intelligent, maybe they would figure out that they're being manipulated into... Because they're so gullible, they're being manipulated into believing things that are just not going to make their life better. And I don't get it. it. Why does it take so goddamn much to make people understand that only unity can get us through this, not separation? Anyway, one of these strange nights where I don't sleep, what does calm me down usually are fragrances that have a very complex concept behind them because they keep me guessing. And, and so if, if I spray on a perfume that's particularly complicated in its inception, then that makes me think about the perfume, you see? So it kind of, it's a trick, you know, that, that makes me think less about the problems that I've just read on social media, in the news, uh, on television and, uh, in the newspapers and it kind of just for a second allows me to, to fly away somewhere else, you know. And that uh, has been for me, um, Thierry Mugler's Womanity. 
the worst perfume name ever, but one of the most beautiful bottles ever, and one of the most beautiful juices ever. Oh, look how beautifully they, they kind of match. Look how this juice becomes even more beautiful with the purple background, or here on top of the little spray. How is it with orange? Less so. Less so with green too, but this, oh, the purple really brings that juice color out. Also, the bunker wall. And then, of course, that chain. It's like one of those dream catchers or one of those like little pearls that you hang on top of the bed and they make that little tingly noise to make you fall asleep. This is also one of the reasons why I love this one at night. Listen. So this was um, a little ASMR. <laughs> yeah, this one is incredible with its ritual and it feels like it takes me places because it's like an alien past or an alien future or could be like, more than womanity. Yeah, I know that womanity, well, I'm going to do a review of this one. Woman, humanity, city. We know all the shtick. It's all been explained a thousand times about what this perfume means. But to me, more than Art Deco, it, it's it's H.R. Giger's alien you know, it's that kind of artwork for me. And um, could it, it could be from the future of human, of mankind. It gives me hope because it makes me feel like our chains, that we were, we were chained to the past, kind of, we can take those chains off, those shackles off and, and spray that past, but reinvent it and, and make something beautiful out of the shit we come from basically. And um, let's spray it on. You know, this is the only one I'm going to spray on. And because it's so complicated, we got the fig, the fig leaf, and the fig tree, and that molecular extraction of caviar, and the molecular extraction of the actual fig fruit. This one keeps me guessing. L'Oréal. They now produce Muglea, and uh, they've discontinued it. What can I say? This is a little miracle of a fragrance. It's so complicated. Um, it's pleasant. It's not that like it's like this crazy smell. The, the, the caviar gives it the salty tone. A thousand reviewers out there have reviewed it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of an extra twist and spin when I review it, but just quickly here, and I understand why I take this one at night. Because that saltiness mixed with that fig, and with this beautiful bottle and the sound, they kind of take me to a place that's really far away from here. And as sad as this sounds, at the moment, I think many of us would rather be anywhere else but here. So thank you guys so much for watching. These are my top five perfumes for the month of August 2020. For my patrons, stay tuned. There's a sixth one coming and also behind the perfumes or behind the month of uh, 2020. Behind the month of August 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.